There he is. Robert Trent Jones, a finishing hole here. Robert Trent Jones, finishing hole. Now, Robert Trent Jones was really known for his bunker placement. It was a heavy amount of bunkers, making it as challenging as you can for any golfer getting closer to the hole. And if you're a fan of golf design, chances are you're a fan of Robert Trent Jones Sr. We're gonna talk about this gentleman who was born June 20th, 1906, and he's a British American golf architect. It's because he was born in Makersfield, England, to the age of five or six, where him and his parents migrated to the United States, and they arrived in East Rochester, New York, where he worked as a caddy at the Country Club of Rochester, accepting a job as a professional soon later at another golf club called Sudas Point or Sudas Bay Heights Golf Club in Sudas Point, New York. That's where he met Donald Ross as a youth, taking up the game and scored a record best of the amateurs in the 1927 Canadian Open, which really put him on the map, which was set a course record at Rochester. Now, working as a golf professional, Jones did attend University of Cornell, which he customized his own degree studying course studies that would allow him to pursue an interest in golf design, which at the time he designed a nine-hole course for the university golf course, which is interesting, now known as the Robert Trent Jones course at Cornell University. Finished the remaining nine holes in 1954. He attended a fraternity there. Soon later, he was married, having two kids, Robert Jr. and Lee's both of which became famous golf architects. And his courses are so famous that they always said the sun never sets on a Robert Trent Jones course. He often got confused with famous golf uh, amateur golf player, Bobby Jones, who he worked with at the time. So not only building golf courses while he was in college, Jones then went into a business with the Canadian golf architect, Stanley Tomlinson, who was extremely famous and he built courses in Canada. Partnership, he went into his own business building local courses in the 1930s throughout the United States. After World War II, Jones got his first major assignment, Peach Tree Golf Club in Atlanta, which he collaborated with Bobby Jones, we just mentioned, and a request to redesign the 11th and 16th hole at Augusta, which was another Bobby Jones request that he worked with, Robert Trent Jones with. So despite their name confusions, they were not related. In 1955, Robert Trent Jones built the Duke University course in North Carolina. Then soon later, he moved to Delaware, where he continued his work with Bobby Jones. And then in 1958, Nine, he moved back to Rochester where he began his own golf career. During the 1950s, his average income was reported to be around 600000 according to Golf Digest, and no one other than Ben Hogan was earning more money in golf at the time. Now, some of Jones's clients were presidents like Dwight D. Eisenhower, who requested the putting green surface at the White House in a single hole at Camp David to be designed as a Robert Trent Jones course. Also, there's another courses in Morocco for private courses that he collaborated, becoming a household name in the 1990s when he was set 18 courses throughout Alabama that were the Robert Trent Jones Trail, the single largest golf design contract in history. Golf design or golf reviews. I played a few of those courses in Alabama. You might like the Parfessor, an independent golf channel. Now, unfortunately, Jones did die almost while building the Architect Golf Course in 2000, or at least being part of it, at the age of 93, June 14, 2000. And he died in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His final course that he completed was in 1999, which is Southern highlands golf club if you made it this far we appreciate you hopefully you could play that southern's highlands golf club in nevada unfortunately it is private that's going to do a far list for independent golf channel this is the par fesser yes oh robert he came he saw and i'm a big fan of him r.i.p you know he died building this course 
believe it or not. Jones yeah, he died in 2020 and the course was finished in 2021. So this last hole was really a, a signature hole. They wanted, not only was it the hardest hole to finish on, and Robert Trent Jones was also known for his enormous greens when you get up there. Just because you're on the green, you're gonna probably three putt from potentially certain locations. Let's just get up and down. All right, it's not much here, about 80 something. This is wet, so I gotta pick it. 